and I am going to be inviting on the stage our next speakers. Ray Voss, the first one. How are you doing, sir, today? Hey there, Vincenzo. How are you doing? Better than I deserve. We should also have a second speaker with today presenting, if I recall correctly. Um, I think I saw the request to join, but I don't see that anymore. Uh, let's see if we can figure this out. Mm. Well, in the meantime, well, let's listen to the presentation first. Um, so the next presentation is going to be from Ray Voss, Vice President of GP, uh, Standard Architect of GP Morgan Chase Bank. You know, you probably know the bank, of course. And Dinesh Katyal, I hope I pronounced this correctly, Product Director and uh, at Financial Exchange. It's going to be kind of a joint presentation about end-to-end -end encryption in financial data sharing. Um, here we have the next speaker. Let's see if the webcam goes on. Yeah, it's uh, giving me a little bit of a heartache with the webcam. Of course, um, yeah. <laughs> let me see if I can uh, uh, shift it to another view. Um, Absolutely. Uh, do I click on the, uh, there's the settings uh, button right there. Yeah, you should have four buttons. It's going to be the webcam. OK, we can see you now. OK, great. Awesome. OK, so who's going to share the screen? I will go ahead and share the screen. OK, let's do that. Just make sure it works correctly, and then I'll be out of your way and leave the stage to you. All right. Thank you for everyone's patience. Um, no problem. I'm trying to figure All out a lot right, of buttons works. over here. <laughs> yeah, that's totally normal. I'm going to put right, this in presentation, presentation mode. Fantastic. I leave the stage up to you. So take it away. Good morning, everyone. And for some of you, uh, good night. Um, <laughs> good evening, rather, because uh, uh, I know we have people from all over the globe. Uh, thanks for the introductions. Uh, we um, will be talking about end to end encryption. Uh, I will cover. Uh, what financial data exchange is, what we do. And uh, Ray, who's my partner in crime, he will talk about uh, what we've been working on uh, in with respect to the application level message encryption. Uh, financial data exchange is a nonprofit industry consortium that's focused on creating data standards to promote and enhance common interoperable framework to efficiently and securely share consumer and business financial data. We operate as a subsidiary of uh, FSI SAC that some of you might be uh, familiar with. The, the forum itself launched formally on uh, October 18th, 2018. We have since grown very rapidly. Uh, Industry is who's who within the United States and very shortly within Canada are on the um, uh, membership. Uh, our board is balanced between financial institutions and non-financial institutions. Uh, at at uh, the current moment, we are at about 120 members and soon to expand even further. We are a technical group. Uh, we focus on uh, technical standards in financial data sharing. Um, we're not a policy or lobbying group, so very much um, uh, working on the engineering side of the fence. Uh, the financial data APIs within the US have an interesting story. Uh, the financial data APIs have been around since uh, 1997, uh, starting with OFX. And uh, many of the members and contributors who created OFX in the beginning are also contributing to the FTX API development at the moment. So it, the, the consortium has a very, very rich history going back almost 20 years. Uh, there was a specification called Durable Data API that was developed, uh, which was JSON based. Uh, that was developed from OFX 3.0. Uh, there's a little bit of typo over here. And uh, that durable data API was then uh, relabeled as uh, financial data exchange when we launched formally in 2018. Uh, last year, we also announced a, a partnership with OpenID Foundation uh, to um, have 
uh, a reference standard for a very important part of the API, which is the API security profile. OpenID has uh, done a lot of work in the area of uh, API security profile, and we adopted that work. The way we are organized is in the form of uh, working groups that are overseen by technical review committee. We have four uh, primary working groups that are working on financial data exchange API. And then we also have a working group that is maintaining open financial exchange API standards. We are a qualification and certification group that uh, is building up the certification programs around the FTX API. Uh, security and authentication working group, which uh, is the primary working group that authored the specification that Ray will be talking about uh, via the end-to-end -end encryption task force. Uh, we have an API data structures working group that focuses on uh, data uh, uh, provisioning for account information. Uh, we are also looking at data provisioning for money movement. We also have a user experience and consent working group that defines uh, how and how the users are informed uh, as to their rights and responsibilities in the data sharing process, and how do we ensure that the user has perfect control and transparency and traceability over how the data is being shared. With that, I'm going to hand you over to Ray. Ray, take it, take it over. All right. <clears throat> um, thanks, Dinesh, and um, hello, everybody. I see we have quite a few people on, in the chat and um, on the call. So, uh, um, thanks for joining, and thank you for your interest in um, in FTX and our in our message encryption standard. So, I'd also like to thank Maciej for his presentation. Um, he's he, he actually covered some of the same areas that that we're going to look at here, so we can maybe go through those, those a little bit quicker. Um, we talked a little bit. You'll, you'll see here about hybrid cryptography, but Maciej covered that in pretty good detail. The um, so um, <clears throat> well, look if you uh, if you can um, yeah so what we're doing here we um, looking to solve for is that we are looking to solve for the uh, the uh, the transport of sensitive data um, so we have we're particularly interested in the um, in, in protecting sensitive data in zero trust architectures and so that was as we all, as we see the emergence of um, public cloud and and with that zero trust and the adoption of zero trust across across industries that was something that we were we were interested in um pursuing was an, an application level encryption so the um the we, we do we do maintain um <clears throat> standard you know, transport in, um, layer encryption with uh tls 1.2 or or better is our, is our spec and um but we wanted to we wanted to take another look down and uh and, and see what see if that was enough and and, re and really for the members it wasn't enough um there was a strong consensus that we did need to do that application level encryption given the zero trust architectures that we're all evolving towards so um what we, you can see down what not in scope um i'd just like to mention that because we had some people in the past who looked at end to end and considered that data at rest to be part of end to end but it, it it's um it's, it was considered very early on that, that was going to be um a bridge too far for this standard. We just wanted to start out and get something that would work for the industry, and um, and so that would be we would leave data at rest for a future effort. So that's um, that's what I have on the first slide, just getting us oriented about what kind of problems we're trying to solve. So um, Dinesh, can we go to the next slide, please? So you can see here are some of our some of the key decisions that we made. So the uh, we're interested in in being standards based. That's um, a very strong focus of a lot of organizations today, and it's definitely something that that within FDX that we're championing is is um, being standards based and getting away from as much as possible anything that would be um, uh, proprietary. So the uh, so that's that was a key one of I guess probably one of our our key focuses in the early on the um, and you can see that so we've adopted. Um, We've adopted standards there. The um, standards that we have adopted are, are adjacent, JSON web encryption, particularly um, we're doing a, a, a nested JOT or a nested J, JSON web token. So, um, we, uh, we, so we, we leverage those RFCs. And, um, and with, the, with the key exchange, so we definitely are interested in a lot of, a lot of, a lot of the uh, financial institutions have implemented a standards-based approach there with the uh, JSON 
web, the JWKS, so it's the JSON web key um, um, endpoints. The um, we have we have seen that widely adopted. We um, so we offered that we offer that as a possibility, but not everyone was ready was ready to take that step. So we did leave it leave in our standard that part open that there um, between the implementers for the key exchange if they wanted to do something besides JWKS, they could. Um, Possibly that might change in the future, but for right now, that's that was the consensus that we that we came to. Um, you know, obviously we recommend standards on that one, but not everyone was ready to take that step. So that's why you see that note there on the um, for the uh, other than JWKS implementation for the key exchange. So um, the uh, we'll um, we can go on to the the next slide. I think that covers the um, the key decisions there. There um, was one last key decision that we did make, which was. For the, we were going to be using an asymmetric key pair, and we wanted to. When we what we wanted to use there was just to have one asymmetric key pair, the um, and not have to have a different different asymmetric key pair for every single partner or for every single application because we thought that would be um, that would be kind of onerous for the um, for the for the partners to go out and get get one of those from a vendor, you know, and for every single partner that they have, so that could be very expensive. And also very, very, and the um, overhead for that is also expensive. So and that was another, and, and, the, and the cryptography is solid. We don't need to do that. So we, um, we, we, we prescriptively said that that's not, that's not going to be required. The um, here we have. So here's a, here's a look at the, at the uh, specific, um, specific RFCs that were that were that were uh, that we're employing here in our standard. You can see there, like I mentioned, the. Um, JSON web tokens. We're using the nest, the nested jot. So we're doing. Um, we have a. We have a. There's another organization in the UK called. Um, it's uh, the UK Open Banking Standard. They're also doing nested jots for um, for their message message encryption for that application level encryption as well. So that's sort of a happy confluence that we we came together and doing it doing that the same way. The um, in our in our implementation. We're doing the JWS, the JSON Web Signature, which Macha did a great job in explaining that um, in the last presentation. We, that's encapsulated in the JSON Web Encryption. So the JWS is encapsulated in the JWE. And so that's, um, we think, is the best practice. I think that UK Open Banking may be doing that the reverse way, but um, we, I think we, um, we found, we thought that the best practice would be to, would to have the JWS encapsulated in the JWE. And so that was our, and that's the approach that we took there. Um, so I think the, uh, we'll move on to the next slide, please. Um, <clears throat> here we have, here we have hybrid encryption. Um, like I said, this is one, you know, we have two keys and this is a pretty classic example of cryptography um, where you have, you know, the Bob and the Alice and then, and then you're trying to, and you, and you encrypt the, the, um, the content encryption key with your asymmetric key, and then you're, and then you can, and then the um, Alice is the only one who who owns the private key that corresponds to that public key, so so only Alice can get access to that content encryption key and decrypt the content and and, and read it. So that's um, classic hybrid cryptography, been around for forty years or more, and um, that's uh, Mache went through that in pretty good detail. We do have a slide here for people just to review. This is the bedrock of what we're, what we're accomplishing here. Is that without this without this technology, um, we would we'd be stuck. But we'd have to go invent it actually. So this is a um, very elegant way to, to handle this problem. So we'll move on to the, the next 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 slide, please. Here's a look at what that looks like. So a nested jot. As you can see, the nested. You can see we have the JWS. Is um is then is then um is in the uh, encapsulating the JWE that looks that's what that looks like from a diagrammatic um, perspective. The um we can move on to the next slide. The we, we in our in our, in our standard we have a couple ways to, of of um of handling the, the 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 content the payload encryption. So one is um at the payload level, and one is at the field level. And this right now is, is open the, um, to, to, to the, how the implementers want to do this, with, whether they want to do it at the payload level or the field level. We did, as, um, as part of our effort, 
um, within our working group at FDX, we did we did some research and we did some experiments, and we um, and we realized that the uh, the with the computing power that machines have today, that it was okay to go ahead and encrypt at the payload level. That we're really it's, you're not saving anything um, really by by encrypting more. The um, now people may have some kind of business requirement that requires them to go to the field level. But um, we, uh, but for for generally, so we left that open. You could you could use either payload or field level. But really, we we um, I think a lot of us are going to be doing payload, um, just because it's it's uh, it's uh, it's um, it has a some of some of the key advantages you can see there. It has a minimal impact to our API and um, the uh, and it's it's uh, has certain other advantages like with the um, we can when you can group the sensitive fields um, by API endpoint, and then that's that makes it easy. Also, the um, so that was, uh, and I think also that's it's a it was probably easier to adopt out of the gate. So we'll see more adoption early, but with people using the payload level. The um, I think we go to the next slide. The um okay so this one is a little bit hard for me to read it's kind of small with on, on the screen all right let me see if i can we yeah, did see we, if i can make it bigger yeah the um so i put it on a larger screen here for myself we in part of our standard we wanted to um be as helpful as possible so we we included some um Thanks, thanks too much. That was a lot better for me. The yeah. So the um, so the uh, we included we included these examples um, just for for edification purposes. These are not these are not normative by any means. These are just these are just examples and implementations. And so um, this one looks like this is the uh, we're showing here is the um, at the uh, at the payload level. We did. We also have. We do have another. We do have an example. I don't think it's in the slide, but we do have another example that's. Um, we can scroll down and give people a look at it. Um, and you can see it's it's. Uh, you can see they have the um, where we have the J we have the JWS encapsulated in the JWE, and you can see how that's um, set off by those brackets there. And um, you can see that. So we have the keys and the IV and so on. The um, the Ray, we, there are a we, couple of questions on the chat uh, around yeah. this topic. I don't know if you want to take those. We are running short in time as well. Um, okay, uh, the we question have, is, what's, left. yeah, we can go to we can go to questions. Yeah. What's the design consideration of end-to-end uh, -end encryption when moving business data to cloud SaaS based design? And this is to make sure cloud software appliances don't capture such data in raw format until data transits from client to cloud to back. And I think it goes to uh, uh, taking encryption all the way to the endpoint, which uh, I think we took a pass on. Um, okay, I see his question. What's From client to cloud to backend, so we're the the the, um, the yeah this encryption is happening between partner organizations, so it's between enclaves is one thing to, to keep in mind here. And the um, and we so we did obviously add that 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 application level encryption, which will be you know decrypted at the application level of your partner, and so. That should, I think that that's going to cover. Um, I think that's going to cover. It's going to be it, most likely these days is going to be in a public cloud, and so that application living in in the public cloud. So then from there, how they how that um, how your partner. So our, our partners with the financial institutions, and we have various aggregators and fintechs, so data providers, data access platforms, and um, data recipients is how we call that in FDX. That's our terminology. The um, the uh, they may add value to that information that they receive from the FIs, and so how they how they go on to protect that 
that's going to be um, something that they that they work on there. So we're not going to we're not going to encrypt it all the way to the um, to the back end. It's going to be till to the to their their the receiving application. So at that point, they can add add whatever value they need to, and then and then pro or process that however they need to, and um, and then keep that encrypted on their end, which they have responsibility to do, obviously. Um, so that's I think that covers. Um, Abaram's question. He has a second question. Why not encrypt both payload and field in which use case? So um, you can. I think I think you you know, depending on the implementer, you might have a use case where you need you're we're gonna have a partner with um, who's gonna be interested in, in payload level. You might have a you might the same implementer might have another partner who is interested in the field level. So you can do you can mix and match as much as you want. I don't foresee that a lot. I think people like to write things once um, and then keep it like that for a while. And um, so I think probably the, you know, initially what people go with is what they're gonna probably use for a while. Um, but we do have the option within the standard that they can, they, they can definitely, and we actually have an example in the standard of both, like I said before, of the, um, the field level is a little more complicated, um, but it's, uh, and it's reflected in, in the example that we that we have in, within the standard. But um, the uh, the uh, straight more straightforward way to go is um, payload. So I, th I think we um, I think we've covered our presentation. Um, we have about uh, we have um, a good five minutes here for questions. If anybody has any other questions. Um, I will give, I'm going to type in my, in, in the chat, I'll type in my email address here at um, JP Morgan. If anyone, if anyone thinks of a question later, or you want to just get, talk about, talk to me offline about what we're doing here, um, there's my email address, just ping me, and I'm happy to set up a, set up a call and, and um, walk through some things or talk through some use cases with people. And likewise, um, I'm going to provide yeah. my email address as well. Um, in, if any of you are interested in how to participate in creating industry standards for financial data sharing, um, the API development, the security aspects, the UX aspects of those, uh, please reach out to me at uh, dkatyal at financialdataexchange.org. All right. Fantastic, folks. Thank you very much for your presentation. And for everybody in the here, you can tweet the chat. The emails are actually here just close to close to the video. Uh, I guess that concludes the first part of the second day of API days. Uh, thank you very much for being with us today. Um, we're going to be taking a break of 20 minutes, no more, and then we'll be back with the session. So enjoy your lunch or your break, uh, have a drink or whatsoever, and I'll see you back in 20 minutes. <laughs>